Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we are going to take a look at the data loading capabilities of Oracle Apex. For this application, we'll be uploading a CSV and an Excel file. So to start with this, uh, let's take a look at our use case. We have two tables, we have the table task and task status. I gone ahead and created a report and a form for both tables. The requirement for the application we're building today is to provide the customer with the option to upload a list of tasks, um, either on a CSV file or an Excel file, um, that will later be inserted into the task table and will appear in, in the report. Uh, to do that, first we need to go to our shared components in the application and under data sources, we're going to click on data load definitions. So we're going to go ahead and click create. And you have two options to create the data load. You can use an existing data load definition or you can do it from scratch. Uh, for now, we're going to keep it on from scratch. And at the end, you can sh choose anything that suits you. Uh, in my case, I will just name it task since that's the name of my application. The target type you can use an APIS collection or you can use a table. I'm going to go ahead and keep it on table and uh, the scripts to run this and create your tables will be available in the description below. All right, so you go ahead and click next. And now the wizard will ask you for a sample file. This file can be CSV, Excel file, text, XML or JSON. And you also have the source type to choose uh, between upload a file and copy and paste. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and do upload a file and we're going to use a sample um, CSV. Now, uh, this file will be available in the description as well, so you can use it and follow along in the video. Next. Now, the way the wizard works is that it will do a column mapping based on your file and it will try to map the source column to the target table. Uh, so for example, in here you can see that the source column task name maps to the task name in the task table, uh, and as well as the due date. Now this is totally customizable. So let's say you don't want the task name to be mapped to the task name, but something else. You can just double click on it and see the different options and just choose what suits you. All right, now in test status though, we can see that it does not map to any column. That is due because if we look at our use case, we don't have any column in the task table named test status. So that's why um, Apex is not mapping it to any. So for right now, we're gonna leave it like this and we're gonna um, later map it to the task status ID so we can obtain uh, the values. But you also have the option to select a primary key. However, since in our file, we do not have any unique columns and the user can upload a task with the same name, we do not need to select one. Uh, for dates and va values, uh, money or anything like that, you can choose your format mask as well in here. Right, so for now, we're just going to go ahead and create the data load. And what we will do now is create a page so we can uh, test our data load. So in this case, we're going to use the data loading. We're going to name it uh, upload data. And I'm going to use a breadcrumb for this. All right, and in here, the wizard will ask you to select your data load. Um, in this case, we're using tasks, so we're gonna select that. And you have, again, if you select it for your data load file, then you need to choose file. Um, if you did copy and paste, then you will choose paste delimited data. And then you can uh, customize the maximum file size that you want. All right, so create it. Now, before we continue with uploading the file, uh, we, let's take a look really quick to the data load definition. So we click on that and in here we can see um, 
what the settings that we selected. And for the loading method, uh, you have three different ones. You have append, merge, and replace. Append will just insert the rows into your target table. Uh, if you selected a primary key, it will uh, skip that row and just insert the new ones. If you select merge, this will update the rows that you already have that match your primary key and will insert the ones that are new. Replace will replace all your data and re replace it with the new data you uploaded. You can also customize the error handling and you can choose between a stop, ignore, load your error into a collection or into the error log. In this case, we're just going to leave it on a stop. All right. And then on the data profile, you can see the format that you used with your sample file and the columns that you have. So in this case, we can see that we have two data profiles. We have test name and due date. Now, in this case, since on our file that we are uploading, we are using three, test name, test status, and due date. So in this case, we're using test, we're missing test status because we didn't map it to any target table. So let's go ahead and add that. So we're just gonna call it, add a column. The name will be test status as the name shown in the file that we uploaded. Uh, we're gonna keep the column time as data. You can choose between lookup, SQL expression, or SQL query. Now the selector will be the name that you use in your file. So in this case, test status. And now the data type will be the data type that you're using in your file. So in this case, we're using our bar car. So we're just gonna go ahead and choose bar car. All right, and then you can select a transformation if you wish for the rule type. You can trim, you can uppercase, lowercase, uh, depending on what you need. Okay, we'll go ahead and create it. All right, so now, um, if you notice in our files, we have, sorry, we have the test status as a bar car. However, in our diagram, we can see that in the test table, we need a number uh, column, test status ID. So we will need to create a lookup table um, using, uh, using the test status to obtain the ID and be able to insert it in the test table. So for that, head and create the add column. And let's name our task status ID. Now, the name that you selecting here in for the data profile column needs to match the name in your target table. Um, so if you use, you, we need the task status ID, we need to use the same name for the data profile column. Also, if the test status ID, the name that you selected, does not match to any column in your target table, it will just get ignored once the data loading is happening. Now, for the column data type, um, since we're doing a lookup table, you can definitely go ahead and choose lookup. And that will definitely work um, in different scenarios. Um, and we will need to choose number because that's what the data type we're looking for. The table name, in this case, will be task status all right and then the return column in this case is the id because that's what we're trying to obtain now on the table column right here you will need to select um what uh, what value you're giving on your file so in this case we're giving a bar card um so we will need to select that um, but if you, and on the data column, you will just need to map it to what you're looking for, which is tax status, because that's what we're trying to find. Now, um, for uh, this case, however, um, on our data file, you can see that we're using um, a, a, a string, a bar card for tax status. So I need, so it needs to be exactly a, an exact match. If I were to have completed with lowercase, then um, the wizard won't map it and it will return you an error because you cannot find it. We need to keep it exactly as it is. So for this purpose, I will go ahead and instead of using a lookup table, I'll create a SQL query. Uh, select the ID from the task status 
uh, where um, the name from the task status, the column, um, match the task status that I'm providing. All right, and on data type again, you select what you're gonna be returned. You will be getting as a return, so it will be a number. Something to bear in mind with this approach is that APIS generates a correlated subquery that can be slow in large data sets, uh, depending on the optimization the database applies to the query. And then you click Create. All right, now that you have that, let's apply changes. All right, and now we can go to our page and try our sample data. And in here, we're going to go ahead and choose a CSV file. We're going to use the same one, sample CSV. And as you can see, you get a preview of your data. Um, that my test name is in for CSV files, status is completed, not started, and the due date. Now, if you click load data, you will receive data load and finish and to roast processed. So now just to see how that worked, let's go to task. And you can see it right over here that it has inserted. All right, if you would like to upload a Excel file, it will look something like this, where um, following the same steps that we did for the CSV, um, you will just select your simple data as an Excel. Again, this will be available in the description if you would like to try it out. Uh, you get the same preview for you to validate your data. And then we just click load data. It will process the rows. And if you go to task, again, you will see it that is in here as well. All right, that'll be all for how to create a basic data load definition. In the next video, I'll cover how to customize the data loading page, as well as creating a user-friendly validations and more. Um, thank you for watching. And if you have any suggestions of any feature you would like me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. Um, and thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.